Greetings and salutations to all you folks out there. It's time for a sentence game. So the half of you that love this and are screaming and shouting in exaltation and joy, let's go ahead and dive right in to the ones who are depressed and completely, totally just put off of the entire idea of a sentence cast. You may kindly show yourselves to the door. I'm going to enjoy this one as my indulgence for the week. All right, let's go ahead and jump into the teams and then we will get going on this game. And just so you know, this was an all randoms game. So random factions, random slots. You never know who you're going to be up against. All righty, on the northern side, we have the Muffin Man playing as a cyber in beach. Steerboard is in the back as UEF Air. Captain White, Cybern on the rock, and Free MP is Aeon at front. That is about as backwards as you could possibly be for faction choices. Gimbal taking Cybern Air versus Steerboard. I kind of feel sorry for him at this point. MNB, otherwise known as Dim, has Aeon on the beach slot. UFC Gladiator taking Aeon front and rounding out the pack. Lextok on the rock position as Aeon. And uh, that is a whole lot of Aeon right there. Okay, that's the slots. You know the map. Let's go ahead and bump up the speed here pretty aggressively just in case this is a long game. That way we won't be stuck here for too much of an age. All right, pretty standard expansion from Steerborn, Double Land Factory to begin pushing out some early P gens, heavy reclaim, and expanding to grab as mass extractors on the front. We have the pretty standard walking up to the mid after you build your land factory and start sucking up as many Tech 3 land wrecks and Tech 2 naval wrecks as you possibly can. Something interesting to note, uh, for those of you who don't know, since the naval reclaim is only 40 something percent total, and land reclaim is 81%. There is actually more total mass in the Tech 3 Rex than there is in the 3 Salem Rex. So if you go for the T3 Rex, you usually end up having more mass than you do if you go for the Salems. All right, nice little push by from Gladiator. He rammed some of his Auroras straight up into Freeze business, and that is going to be quite the annoyance having to get some tanks online to deal with those and that is going to put free way behind on expansion add to that the fact that the entire southern team is sending bombers towards the north and this front player is having a hell of a time getting started it looks like m and b snatched the island away from captain white so at this moment the southern team holds both the islands and we have a nice push here from a drop, Aurora is beating the ever-living daylights out of this base. Captain White losing most of his main eco section and is going to have to rebuild that, not to mention the fact that he had to build a whole bunch of Mantis. Then we've got Engineers going down right here to steal his reclaim on top of that. That is a jerk move right there. And that is going to give M&B an even bigger leg up. All right, got Naval Rush coming out for the Muffin Man. He is pushing some subs and frigates down towards the southern side. There was a Tech 2 upgrade started on this for Lexstock, but he has paused that at the moment. I am not sure why. Probably getting some eco upgrade going. And yeah, that's probably the case. And uh, Tech 1 Bombers coming across as well to start killing off the build power. That is brilliant on the part of Muffin Man. That is going to hurt. I am pretty impressed with how that is going, actually. Very well done by him. And then pretty much the reverse is happening down here. M&B is pushing Tech 1 bombers up to destroy the build power up here. And the frigates are going to hang around in the base. Got a nice little proxy navy going for M&B. Let's check in with our air players. Tech 2 factory is complete going to Tech 3 at 10 minutes and 45 seconds. Steerborn does, does have the RAS, I think. Yes, he does. All right, and going back to Observer down here. Oh, what is this? He got a Tech 2 transport out before he went to the Tech 3 upgrade. Sparky's down on center. Those are going to start throwing down shields, point defense, and all manner of nasty stuff. That is going to be a major hindrance to Gimbal, who is already at a significant rank disadvantage versus this air player. That is going to end up being a horrendous hassle to deal with. Gimbal does have his Tech 3 air factory online, but unfortunately Steerborn has already gotten air control 
and has a substantial amount of ASF on the southern side. Gimbalt is playing very smart though. He is holding his ASF close to base so that they do not get sniped off one at a time as they go out here. Attack launcher going down for Steerborn, followed by two more. Those are going to start wiping out the eco, and that was a brilliant move on Steerborn's part. We've got Tech 2 Navy on the field for Dim. He is pushing Tech 2 across the water. Uh, there is a Tech 2 factory over here. I would encourage Captain White to reconsider his choices in naval units. You do not ever want to build Tech 2 subs versus an Aeon Navy because the, the, uh, the Aeon Destroyer is ridiculous as an anti-sub weapon. You will not win that war with Tech 2 subs. So it is better just to go ahead and start building destroyers so that you can use your range and the high firing rate do do some fancy dodging and hopefully deal with the threat with Salem's. All right, tack launchers coming in fast and hard from Steerborn's base here. We're seeing mass extractor blanks pop up all over the place, but look at the overwhelming weight of fire coming down on this base from a total barrage of Tech 1 artillery. There is just no way to survive a hit like that. Slowly the point defense are disintegrating under the weight of fire. Oh, that was actually almost a clean survival, but thanks to this Tech 2 stationary artillery and the mobile missile launchers in the back, I think that will not recover from the blow that it just took. Muffin Man has Salem's out on the field. They are going to start hitting the center base here, but Gladiator is able to get two stationary Tech 2 artilleries up. Looks like he's going to build more than that, and he has plenty of shielding, so that is not going to be any worry. Tech 1 bombers dealing with the Navy over here. One thing you got to remember about the Aeon Navy, you have to build cruisers and or anti-air boats because Aeon Navy does not have secondary anti-air functions. It just doesn't. So the destroyers and frigates are completely helpless against even a tiny amount of air unless you have dedicated air coverage. Three Salem's is going to be a bit much. Those are going to start damaging the shields of this Aeon base. Hopefully these Tech 2 artillery, well, they need to be targeted over here. But uh, there is a stealth boat, so he's not going to have any targets to aim at. But, thank goodness, there is a very large naval force moving southward. Now five strat bombers, or is that four? That is four. I'm sorry, I mistook the overlap. Steerborn is going to send a handful of strap bombers down aimed at Lexstock, trying to knock out one of the higher rated players, but it looks like there's going to be an attempt to kill off the strap bombers by Gimbal, and then we throw in some swift wins from Lexstock, and I think those strap bombers will get knocked out before too much havoc is wreaked. All right, I say all right a lot. I think that is the sponsored word of the day for this cast. Okay, Navy moving forward from Lexstock. That is going to push right up on these Salem's. Come into close quarters where the Exodus misses much less and absolutely demolish that little group of Navy there. Down on the southern side, Steerborn is building broadswords. Uh, Captain White very nearly lost that Navy, but thanks to the help of those broadswords, that is going to be denied and the broadswords are going to move south. Hopefully he sees that cruiser. Yes, he does. He's going to plug right on down there and obliterate the face off of that cruiser thanks to the high damage of the broadsword. And those are going to come back across and start hammering down on the island. Hopefully they can eliminate that proxy base. And in the meantime, Captain White's going to start building back up on Navy, hopefully before... M&B can force him completely out of the water. Muffin Man has been forced back into a corner, but he does have a Tech 3 ACU. That is going to allow him to build the nasty son of a guns known as Harms. Those are going to do a good job of denying immediate entrance into his cove. Hopefully he can keep most of his build power alive, and he has a couple of Salem's to help him out. Those Harms just do so much damage going to drive the Navy back out of the bay and Muffin Man will be safe at least temporarily. That is going to give him a small mass dump right there on the front. Got a handful of destroyers out that he can reclaim and that will give him an opportunity to rebuild. Alright, and there I go again. Alright, 
Okay, cruisers are finally going to deal with those broadswords. It looks like Captain White is finally going to get the island back. Why he dropped Mantis, I do not know, but he also is dropping engineers. There's a handful of tanks up there, but those are going to get wasted by that Salem. All right, swift winds in the north for Lexstock. I would be surprised if he does not move Tech 3 air relatively soon. He does have a substantial amount of build power over there, and he does need to help his teammate out. No offense to Gimbal, but when you're versus someone with that much of a rank disadvantage, 2100 to 1200, add to that the fact that you got dropped early on and lost a substantial portion of your eco you're gonna need help in the air and Lexstock is gonna be the one in a position to do so because he does have the very good naval advantage tons of build power very substantial eco he is actually top of the scoreboard at the moment with a whopping 342 mass income that is massive nearly double the next player steerborn at 195 so that is an absolutely scary amount of eco and he has the build power to use it all up torpedo bombers coming out hopefully to help deal with those harms and some of the other naval units that he's having issues with muffin man doing a very good job of protecting his units with cloak rather stealth i'm sorry that is not cloak and building a monkey lord. Where that will go, no one knows, but I would place my money on the mid. If we can get rid of that base, hopefully free can do something to take advantage of it, although free, as we saw early in the game, was pretty much removed from an offensive stance due to the raiding by bombers and early units. <clears throat> Steerborn looks like he's preemptively dropping some Tech 1 engineers. He's getting ready to reclaim after this inevitable battle. Muffin Man does have three harms in the water. I think the engineers were probably dropped too far out, but he is going to get a factory up and that will allow him to reclaim. Tech 2 torpedo bombers coming in for a pass. Those are going to go directly after the harms. Muffin Man taking a substantial amount of damage there as well. Uh, maybe he will die? No, he won't. That would have actually been a good opportunity to kill an ACU because even though you're donating the eco to the air player, thus the highest scoring member of the northern team, even though you're donating an extra eco to him, the blast of the ACU going nuclear would kill off all of the build power in this area and that would allow Lextot to easily overwhelm the factories and defenses that were left and then once he had complete and total control of the water, that would just open up huge avenues of attack for him to start eliminating not only this base, but the front as well. Because once you eliminate your naval opponent, you can basically wipe a third of the map. All right. Got uh, Destroyer right up here, taking aim at that Tech 2 Mass Extractor. That's going to do a little bit of damage to free MPs already heavily restricted eco. And seeing multiple engineer drops from Gimbal. That is actually very nice. He's got a group of engineers here for reclaim. Dropping engineers off in a string all the way across the map. And then, well, he was going to drop some up there. But I think those were eliminated by cruiser fire. <clears throat> Excuse me. Got some Exoduses now moving in on Captain White's base. He has finally been forced out of the water underway to fire from these Exoduses. And that is not going to go well for him. He gave his mass extractors over to Free MP. Why? I know not. There it is. He's building a GC. That is why he gave his eco over. Once that GC is done, it could actually be paired with the Monkey Lord that was finished. And where did it go? Which way did he go, George? Which way did he go? Oh, it isn't done yet. My bad. I was probably looking at that directly in the face, but I can go ahead and claim that it was in my blind spot, and therefore I am excused for not seeing it. Okay. It is looking like there is a distinct advantage for the Southern team at this point, despite the fact that they nearly got demolished at the beginning of the game. That sparky drop at the beginning could have ended very badly for this team, but luckily the team came together. Dim, um, 
UFC Gladiator and Gimbal all focused on getting units out and just wiping that thing out. And that is what you've got to remember in a team game like this. If there's a drop in another player's base, it's not just his problem. It's everyone's problem. Because if you lose one link in the chain holding this landmass together, you are going to fall. And you can see how that worked out where they just came back, pulled together, and then delivered a severe beating to the northern team in terms of Navy. Oh, Strat Bomber's coming in, aiming for the Tech 3 power. That is doing even more damage to Muffin Man's Eco. I'm actually kind of impressed with his ability to stay in the water at this point. He did get a battleship out. That's going to give him the ability to reach out at range and protect his arms. One thing he does have going for him is he's versus an Aeon opponent. You get a lot more mileage out of harms when you're versus either a Cybern or, a, um, or an Aeon opponent because Aeon cannot deal with harms until Tech 3 with either Battleships or Torrents or the Tempest. And Cybern cannot deal with harms until Tech 3 with the Battleships. Their units do not have enough range, whereas Seraphim and UEF, you've got the cruisers that can reach out a long ways and hit the harms with ground fire. And uh, for those of you who don't know, know how to use ground fire against harms, uh, down in the left-hand side, let me get a uh, unit selected here. And I don't have a control panel. Well, crap. Um, down here on the left hand side there will be an aiming reticule like a little red crosshair if you click on that um, <clears throat> the there will be three selections available one of them is normal one of them is attack uh, something the center one is the one that you want and then at the bottom there is a hold fire so what you want to do is you want to put your unit on ground fire take an actual attack command, place it on the ground, and then hold shift and drag it over the top of the harp. And that will, the, the ship will just attack that spot on the ground and the harm is under it so the area of effect will damage it. All right, we've got Torrents coming out now for Dim. He's gonna start pulling out those massively ranged units those things can reach far into the landmass. You can see the incredible amount of range on that. It is the longest ranged um, naval unit, and that was a kill right there. Free MP has gone down. So, so sad to see. That was due to the Exodus fire, I believe. Yes, yes it was. All right enough trivia about naval units. We've got a beautiful little foothold on the land down here for Dim. He is holding this mass extractor spot. If I were him, I'd be throwing down factories and pushing land units, but he has apparently decided that that is not a good investment, and I kind of don't blame him because there's a ton of point defense and wall sections up there. So that would be pretty difficult to break into. Steerborn is moving his GC up towards the north. Uh, that's not sure exactly what he's planning with that. Muffin Man has done beautifully. He has gotten enough battleships up that with the help of the air player and these battle cruisers here that Steerboard is building, he has been able to push the naval units back and now he's coming forward to deal with the Tempest. Gladiator is doing the correct thing here. He is finished with his opponent basically. So you have to decide what you're going to invest your mass in, and he has jumped into the navy that looked worse off, obviously the northern side, and he is building Tempest to supplement his player's navy. That is the best thing that you can possibly do in a sentence game, is to supplement one navy or the other from the front. Normally that is done with hover units, and in this case I would actually recommend hover units over Tempest, because Cybran, you can get in there pretty easily with hover units, and when you're talking about uh, mostly Tech 3 battleships, battleships are not going to be able to deal with hover. So that would be an excellent, excellent choice. All right, looking at the base builds, we've got lots of Tech 3 power, lots of normal stuff, heavy eco, nothing really super spectacular. On the southern side, 
We do have a strategic launcher built, but it is not loaded yet. And a Caesar, a czar. Excuse me, please don't comment all over the place about how I can't pronounce anything. Um, <laughs> building a czar to send across. Looks like it's going to go caddy corner over in this direction. Lots of T4s coming out for the Southern team. Got all of these Tempests. That is three Tempests total and now working on a Tech 3 Naval Factory upgrade. And we've got units coming out to reclaim that. Uh, one disadvantage here is that the Tempests actually have equal range to the Summit. So since you do have the assistance of a UEF player in the water, that is going to hamper the effectiveness of the Tempest. So now we have a Czar ASF cover with a small group of restorers for mop-up. And that is going to start moving north towards the Navy, unfortunately. There's a ton of cruisers that he really needs to deal with. You can see the health just falling off of that Czar. And ASF coming in. It's going to drop and deal some damage. It's going to not quite kill the summit and do a whole lot of damage to that galaxy so overall really not worth the mass for that czar it didn't do a whole lot of damage those restorers are going to come in and start pounding down on the gc and we're about to find out who wins the air fight gimbal may have actually done it numbers looking close and gimbal is going to ooh, nasty bit of micro steerborn getting in behind gimbal beautifully that was that was almost terrible. Lextock coming in for a little bit of fire with his swift winds. That is going to make the difference and Steerborn is going to be forced back. That was almost a win from inferior numbers from Steerborn's ASF. Unluckily, uh, the com the combined forces of Gladiator, Swift Winds, and Lextock's ASF forced him off of his pattern and he was not able to finish the job. All right, M&B does have possession of a whole bunch of strap bombers. Those have been given to him by Gimbalt. I'm not sure why, possibly for Micro, while Gimbalt is worrying about air. Those are going to be frighteningly effective at the moment because the northern team really doesn't have a whole lot of air defense. There is a megalith under the water. Another interesting piece of trivia is that the megalith moves faster underwater than it does overwater. Actually, like a 20% speed increase. I don't exactly remember. It is fairly substantial. It, it is no laughing matter. If you have the opportunity to move underwater as opposed to on the land, you definitely need to take the underwater option because we'll get there much, much quicker. All right, nuke defense is down. We're probably going to see a nuke launch from down here. Oh no, it is not loaded yet. That means Gimbalt must be severely mass stalled. Actually, he's power stalled. Horrendously power stalled. And I missed Steerborn dying. What the crap? What killed him? Did he control K? He control K'd! Really? <laughs> Why? Why would you do such a thing? He had the... I guess when he lost the nuke defense, he just decided he didn't want to play anymore. So that is that. Everyone is going to quit out, and that is the end of this game. All right. Kind of a sad ending, but that is a sentence game, folks. That is normally how sentence goes. It progresses to the point where one team or the other decides that the game is lost and they have no chance of pulling it out. And then they all quit because sentence is one of those, um, sentence is one of those maps that you could drag out a loss for a half an hour or 45 minutes. But most of the time people value their time more than that. So once they decide that it's lost, they will quit. However, I will say that uh, only the most uh, vindictive players will do what Steerborn did there. Control K your entire base before leaving so that your team does not have the opportunity to fight it out. And on that, all I got to say is, listen, if you want to leave uh, any game, I completely understand that. Even if it's a rage quit. Um, 
Some people have to leave because they're out of time. Some people just don't want to waste any more time on a game. You know what? That's okay. If it's a full share game, which Sentence usually is, by all means, leave. But leave your stuff for people who wish to fight it out. That is just being a jerk to control K your entire base and auto lose for your team. If you want to leave, leave your stuff alive. And that is completely fine. And you know, there's some people that even complain about that, um, about people who leave, period. But I've got to say, I've left some games and I, I know people leave games all the time. It's not that big a deal. All right. Well, that is a sentence game. Very nice sparky drop at the beginning. Excellent recovery by the Southern team, followed by very superior naval play on both the North and the South Navy. Although I got to say the, the matchup was not that great. Steerboard definitely needed that early play to try to win early because he knew that he was going to lose late game. But that was a nice defense up here by the Muffin Man. Lots of interesting things happening in that game. Hopefully you guys picked up on some strategy that you wish to exploit later for your own purposes and maybe everybody learned something. All right, that is going to wrap it up for this cast. This game, that is the end of Sentence for a while. I won't cast another one for a good, good amount of time. And just thanks for watching.